Oh my god! Pure lead, face swaps, automatic face and hands fixer, out painting and even image to video generation. This is my ultimate all-in-one flux workflow version 2. Hello humans, my name is Kayo Overload and boy oh boy do I have some mind-blowing stuff for you today once again. Because in this video I'm gonna showcase my super awaited ultimate all-in-one flux workflow version 2. Now if you don't know what that is, I highly recommend watching my first video on the subject but basically, it is an all-in-one Flux workflow for Config UI that was created specifically for complete beginners. Meaning that with this single workflow, you can do pretty much everything in one single space. And it's made to look as clean and slick as possible. You will not find anything like this online. And with version 2, this is even more true today. This took me a long time to make and optimize, and I will show you how to use everything new in this video. So, sit back, relax, and let's go. Alright, so to install everything that you need for this to work, you can either use the automatic one-click installer that is available for my Patreon supporters, that will automatically download and install everything that you need for this to run, and believe me, this is really practical because there is a lot of things to download and install for version 2, and if you have any issues, don't hesitate to DM me on Patreon, and I will help you as soon as possible. Or you can just follow my written guide that will be in the description down below, I've already made a lot of videos showing how to install install Confi UI and all the models, I really just want to get to the meat of the video. The meat of the video meaning the ultimate all-in-one Flux workflow version 2 of course. Now obviously before we begin, do not forget that you need to go to the manager and update everything about Confi UI and then once you load the workflow, do not forget to go to the install missing custom nodes and install everything that you see right here. And then you can basically restart the web UI and reload the workflow and then you're ready to go. Alright, so where do I even begin? Because oh Jesus, uh, I don't know if you noticed but uh, there's a lot of things on the screen right now and uh, yeah, I mean it took me a long time to do, but uh, I guess uh, let's start from the very beginning and see the differences between the V1 and the V2. Now one small thing that I added to this workflow compared to the version 1 is instead of having to go back to the area that you want to use and right clicking into the group and then clicking set group nodes to always to activate the area and then right clicking again to set group nodes to never to disable it. Now for each section, for each zone, for each area, you have this little area, you have this little node called a fast groups bypasser and basically each time that you want to activate or deactivate an area all you have to do is just click on this little button right here and it will either activate or deactivate the area simple as that this is much better much faster much easier to see as well on the screen this is definitely a small addition but definitely very very practical okay so now let's talk about what's really new that was added to this version too and let's talk about face swap now face swap is a really cool addition that was asked by a lot of people and it's actually really really cool it's very easy to use and very very fun as you can see we have now here a very nice uh demo of what this could look like this is your future US president, everybody. And the way it works is basically very, very simple. First, you load one image, the face you want to replace. Then you load a second image with the face you want to replace it with. You leave pretty much everything by default. You don't need to touch anything. And then once it's done, you can basically click Q. And in only a few seconds, it will do the face swap automatically. So like, for example, let's do the inverse. Let's do Kamala Harris right here. And then replace it with the face of Donald Trump without doing anything else. If I click on Q, after only a few seconds, you get this absolutely beautiful image. Mwah! Oh, this is chef's kiss right there. This is amazing, guys. <laughs> Your future US president, everybody. So yeah, I mean, this is a really fun tool. It's very easy to use and very, very fast. Not really much anything else to say. And if face swapping only one person is not enough for you, well, guess what? You can actually face swap up to three different people. That's right. You have here this area that allows you to face swap two different people. Once again, it's very self-explanatory. It's very easy. On the top, you always put the original image. Then you load the two faces that you want to swap it with. You don't need to touch anything. And you can just click Q. Now, I'm not going to go into details on how to explain which faces go where. I think it will only complicate a few things. Basically, all you need to do is just input an initial image right here. Then you put the rest of the faces right here. You click Q. You look at the final result do you like the face swap or not maybe the faces are not in the place that you want to be let's say that you want for example the woman's face right here and the man's face right here well in that case you can just upload the male's face right here and the female's face right here instead then click Q 
And then, bada bim bada boom, the faces are finally at the right place. And if two people is not enough for you, well, guess what? I also made a way to swap three different faces. Basically, uh, once again, the same principle, just play around with the faces, see in which order they appear. And then if you don't like the order, just interchange the order of the load and then try again. It's really not that complicated. It's super simple to use. It's super fast. And I gotta say, it's really, really fun. And the quality of the face swap are actually Actually pretty good and pretty well done sometimes. Obviously the closer the anatomy are to the original face, the better the blend will be, but you can also end up with some pretty cool and very funny results when the faces don't match the original shape. So I mean yeah that's that's kind of funny. So yeah there you go this was face swap, it's right there for you to use. Okay so next let's talk about Pulid. Now you might have heard about this before, but Pulid is basically a instant ID clone, which is also a video I made a few months ago. But basically what Pulid is, is that it is an easy way to generate images of a person's face from one single picture. So like for example, let me just disable this. If I upload this image of this Asian lady, if now I write a prompt and then I press Q, we manage to generate this kind of image. This absolutely absolutely beautiful portrait of this young woman that looks exactly like the original image. And this is basically what Pulit is. It allows you to generate more images of your subject from one single picture. And yeah, I mean it is really really super powerful. Now you might see here is that there is also another option that I disabled earlier that I recommend you to play around with. And basically this is an image that you can load that the final image will take inspiration from. So like for example if I enable this and I input this photo of this astronaut gentleman. If now I press Q, now we get this absolutely super beautiful image. Now she's wearing an astronaut suit with a US flag, but in a very similar style and aesthetic than the original prompt that I input right here, which makes this pulley generation super, super useful and super powerful, meaning that you can generate a bunch of amazing images of your subject from one single image in pretty much any setting that you want. So yeah, Pulit is really really super cool. And don't forget that Pulit can either be used with the FP8 version of the Flux model or if you go on the right side, you can use it with the GGUF version of the models. Exactly like everything else. So yeah. That was Pulid and it is really, really cool. Definitely a really cool addition to the V2 workflow. Okay, so next, let's talk about a Detailer. So what a Detailer is, is basically an automatic masking and in-painting tool. So basically what it does, depending on what option you choose, if you choose, for example, the face detector, once you input your image, let's say that you inputted an image of a woman's face, but the, the face is kind of blurry and doesn't look that good, well, you can put it inside the ID Tailor, select the face detector, click Q, and it will then automatically create a mask around the face and then impaint it to create a more beautiful, more detailed face in the final image. And all of that without you having to do anything. And that is really, really cool. Now, do not forget to play around with the denoising strength. Here, I put it at 0.8 because this parameter kind of works pretty well with this example, but sometimes you might want to increase or decrease that value depending on your image. One thing that is also pretty cool is that you can also use a LoRa in addition with this a Tailor. So like for example if I select here a LoRa of Starlight that you can find on CVT AI with the trigger word. If now I press Q and it gives you something like this, kind of like this weird face but that's probably because my denoising strength is a little low which will also merge with the previous woman's face. But for an automatic in painter it's still pretty cool. Now one thing that a Tailor can also do that is also capable of is instead of masking faces, it can mask and fix hands. Now sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't work, it's kind of like, you know, depending on the position, depending on the hands, but basically all you need to do is here, instead of the face model, you need to choose the hand model, decrease that denoising strength to something like maybe 0.7 and then press Q, which will then automatically create a mask around the hand and then impact it to either add a little bit more details and to give a better anatomy to the hand. So like for example, this was the before and this is the after. As you can see before, we only have like a one single finger right here and not a lot of details on the hands. And after the automatic ID tailor, now we have two separate fingers with way more details around the hands and the fingers. 
and everything was done automatically. Now obviously it cannot like save a very completely destroyed hand, do not think that you can just put a hand with three fingers and it will automatically generate a perfect hand with five fingers, it doesn't work like that because it's still just simple in-painting, it's just that the in-painting is done automatically for you but sometimes in some situation with some images, this is really all you need and the fact that you don't need to do it manually and you can just let agitator do it automatically is still very very cool, so yeah, there you go. Okay, so now let's talk about the last two and probably my favorite addition to this whole entire version 2 of the workflow and that is the flux out painting. So before we had a simple in painting technique where you could just upload the image, in paint an area to create a brand new image at the end but up until now you could never expand an image beyond its border. But now with out painting you can. So basically the way it works is that you upload an image then you select the scale of the image so that you can preview the expanded area and how it will look like then it will actually use stable diffusion excel to do the first pass of out painting which actually usually looks really really good and then it will use flux to expand and add more details to the image. So let me show you how it works first. So the very first thing that you need to do before you start is to actually disable this group and enable this area that allows you to uh, basically upload your image and then select the scale of the input image because if you don't do that you don't know how the final area will look like. So like for example if I input this value and I click Q you you can see that now right here all this black area is all the new area that will be added to the image. But let's say that for example it is maybe a little too much for me, about maybe a little bit less area, well I can just increase the scale of the input image, maybe to something like 42, then press Q again and now you can see that now this is much better, now we will only have the left and right area to inpaint and I think this is good enough for me and the reason why we only want to activate this area is because if we activate everything else it will go through the entire workflow from the beginning till the end and if you see for example that your um, the scale of your input image was maybe a little too much or maybe a little too low well you are stuck with this area until it is done so you should definitely just activate this area first then you play around with the scale of input image until you are satisfied with the results so like this this is good for me then you can activate the full area once again you're gonna input your prompt and you can either do it manually which is kind of annoying to be honest or you can just use this image to prompt area I'm just gonna deactivate this or you can basically just upload your image then press Q and in only a few seconds you will see that it will analyze this image and give you a final prompt that you can then select Control c to copy then deactivate this area then activate out painting put the prompt right here maybe modify what you want to modify, add what you really want to see in the background for example or on the sides, basically anything that you want. Then you're gonna select the width and height of the final image. In my case this is good enough for me and then once everything is done you can just press Q to start the workflow and as you can see at first it will create this very first rough image that will be outpainted with the SD Excel model. It's actually pretty good already but it may be missing on a lot of details and basically now we will go through the flux model to add even more details back into the background or at least into the missing areas and there we go this is the final image done with flux and on the right side right here you can actually compare the before and after so this is the first pass with stable diffusion excel and this is the second pass with the flux model which as you can see added way more details compared to the previous stable diffusion out painting and it just looks way better now once again this is just like an example this is actually way more powerful than you think it is here I basically just did the lazy method without adding anything but I could have added like some trees a completely different background and stuff like that but even with this, this still looks amazing and if you see for example that you prefer the Stable Diffusion Excel art painting compared to the final flux finish, well don't worry all of those images are saved automatically anyway so you can just choose the one you prefer at the end. So yeah, I mean it's really that simple. And once again this version is made with the FP8 version of the dev model but you can of course do it with the GGUF version of the models. So even if you don't have a lot of VRAM you should be able to use it without any issues. Okay, 
So now that this is done, now that we saw alt painting, let's talk about probably my favorite addition to this whole workflow, and that is the image to video. Yeah, that's right. As you can see here, this is basically the example that is playing in the background. So the way it works is very, very simple. Basically, you upload your image, preferably in a sort of 16 by 9 ratio, because otherwise it's not gonna work as well. Then you're gonna input your prompt and how the animation is gonna play. So like here, for example, I input that the camera is rotating around the young woman and that is exactly what's happening right here. Then you input here your frame rate, basically how many frames per second this video will play out as, which I highly recommend putting it at eight because the next step will actually automatically upscale the video into a higher resolution, but also interpolate to create missing frames and transform an eight FPS video into into a 24 FPS video, which looks much, much better. I mean, this looks amazing. And all of this was done from a single image. So yeah, I mean, this is really super powerful. And I mean, yeah, that's it. This is pretty much how it works. You can basically use the image to prompt tool to write the final prompt automatically that you can put right here. Then you input the action that you want the video to do. Usually the camera rotation works really, really well and add a huge dynamic feel to the final video. And I mean, yeah, that's pretty much it. It's really that simple. Now, usually this generation takes around like 18 gigabytes of VRAM, like 17, 18 gigabytes of VRAM. And for like a six second video, it takes around like five to six minutes to generate. However, if you don't have that much VRAM and this is way too slow for your GPU, all you can do instead is activate this little option right here that says enable sequential CPU offload. And it will basically offload some of that work onto your CPU, liberating your VRAM, so you can generate the final video much, much faster. And to demonstrate basically how it works, step by step, let's actually take the, the image that we created right here. So let me just copy this and paste it right here. I'm also gonna use this tool to kind of describe and give me uh, the full prompt so that I don't have to write the prompt myself because I'm a little lazy and it's really fast. It only takes a few seconds. Just gonna copy this and deactivate. I have to activate again. Then I'm gonna put the prompt right here. And then once again, the last line, I'm just gonna say, the camera is rotating around her because it's probably the easiest way to showcase this. I made sure that the frame rate for the first initial video is eight and then the final frame rate is 24. And then all you need to do is basically click on Q and then wait a few minutes until the video is made. And after a few minutes, we get something like this. Now, this is really super resource intensive. It is actually so intensive that my capture software actually crashed and I had to restart my computer. So yeah, it is, it is, it is pretty intensive. But basically in the end, we get like a eight frame per second video that is then upscaled and then interpolated until we see a 24 frames per second video. So that in the end, we get something like this. So definitely way smoother than the 8 FPS video and also at a way higher resolution. So yeah, I mean, this looks pretty cool. So yeah, there you go. A super easy way to take an image and transform it into a video. I mean, this is really super cool. So yeah, there you go. I think I pretty much covered everything in this new version 2 of the ultimate all-in-one flux workflow. Obviously, all the previous stuff are still there, like the normal image generation, image to image, up scanner in painting control net but now you have a bunch of brand new tools for you to play with and generate some super cool pictures as always this workflow is on my patreon so don't hesitate to grab it and try it out yourself let me know what you think of it in the comments down below once again if you are one of my patreon supporters don't forget that i provide priority support so if you have any questions whatsoever just send me a dm and i will try to answer as soon as possible so yeah there you go Definitely try out this workflow yourself. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of it. And as always, have fun. And there we are with folks. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you also so much to my Patreon supporters for supporting my videos. You guys are absolutely awesome. You people are the reason why I'm able to make these videos. So thank you so much. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.